For the applications of convection, we have a couple of examples. Let's start with the first example about laptop cooling. We have discussed a similar example of laptop heating during one of the previous lessons on thermal conductivity. In that example, we mainly discussed how the laptop heats up due to conduction between various components of the laptop. But in this case, our focus will be on convection and how we can use forced convection to cool down the laptop from overheating. As we know, the laptop is a very complicated assembly of many interconnected components. And out of all the components, the processor is the major source of heat generation. To avoid overheating of the laptop, engineers design it with devices to absorb heat and force it out of the laptop through exhaust grills. The heat sinks and cooling fans are such devices to dissipate excess heat from the laptop using forced convection. In this example, we'll perform a steady-state thermal analysis on a laptop assembly. Though the laptop has many components under its hood, for this case, we'll have a simplified assembly. In our simplified assembly, various components such as the processor, the battery, hard drive, DVD drive, card reader, and the heat sink will be placed directly on the PCB. Although all of these components are enclosed, we'll neglect the enclosure for our simulation. All the electronic components will have shared topology with each other, and hence they'll have perfect thermal contact and shared nodes at touching interfaces. We will not model the actual fan in this model, but we'll imprint faces that are in the path of the forced convection that forces air from the heat sink to the exhaust grills. In the laptop assembly, we'll have different material properties for different components. The PCB will have an orthotropic thermal conductivity, in which the in-plane conductivity is dominant. All other materials will have isotropic thermal conductivity, and their values are presented here. In this case, we have two heat generating sources. One is the processor, and the second one is the battery. For both, we'll use internal heat generation boundary condition. Considering their volumes, we'll use these magnitudes, which is equivalent to approximately 28 watts for the processor and 18 watts for the battery. Our focus is on convection for dissipating excessive heat from the system, and hence we'll use convection boundary condition on three different regions, and the ambient temperature is set to 22 degrees Celsius. As the heat sink is the main device to absorb and dissipate heat, we'll consider it to be in the direct path of the cooling fan. For all the faces of the heat sink, except the bottom face which is connected to the processor, we'll apply a higher film coefficient of 50 watts per meter square per degree Celsius. The imprinted face carries heat at a higher rate than the outer faces of other electronic equipment, so let's just set the film coefficient at 30 watts per meter square per degree Celsius. For all the outer faces of other components, we'll apply a lower film coefficient of 5 watts per meter square per degree Celsius. With these boundary conditions, we'll solve the case for two scenarios, one with a heat sink and second without a heat sink. For the second case, we'll suppress the heat sink body from the geometry. The rest of the boundary conditions will remain the same in both scenarios. Once we compare the results for both cases, we can observe that the heat sink helps us to cool down the temperature of the overall laptop system very effectively. With the heat sink, the maximum temperature drops by approximately 30 degrees Celsius. Thus, we can conclude with this comparative study that the forced convection on the heat sink can help the laptop to cool down and avoid overheating. The heat sink can be effective in providing more surface area from which heat is removed via convection. Another good use of convection is fluid flow in pipes or tubes. It's a common way of cooling and heat exchange and has a wide application such as heat exchanger, electronic cooling, and uh, engine cooling. This type of convection involves mass flow and temperature change in the fluid. And to accurately model these behaviors would require the knowledge of computational fluid dynamics, also known as CFD. 
However, CFD is computationally expensive. Alternatively, one can use 1D thermal fluid line elements to model the fluid mass flow in pipes and this heat convection in a conduction-based solver, such as ANSYS Mechanical. These elements can provide sufficient accuracy of the mass flow, heat conduction within the fluid, and the convection between the fluid and the enclosing body, while its biggest advantage is its cost efficiency. As noted, the main purpose of the 1D thermal fluid line elements is to represent the bulk temperature of the fluid. So instead of assuming the fixed bulk temperature, it can be calculated during the solution, which allows capturing the bulk temperature change of the fluid as it adds or removes heat to the solids. A thermal fluid line element can be used in both steady state and transient thermal analysis. In either of the simulations, the following inputs need to be provided for the fluid line element. The first one is the mass flow direction. This is controlled by the line orientation in the geometry properties. It's important to make sure the flow direction of connecting fluid line bodies do not conflict. After making sure the mass flow direction is correct, we will need to define the mass flow rate. Its unit is kilogram per second. As mentioned in the previous lesson, the mass flow rate will influence the film coefficient. Another input is the cross-section area of the fluid flow. This is taken care of during the geometry creation stage, where the fluid line elements are geometrically created as beams, and the beam cross-section is used as the flow cross-section area. Other than these, we also need to define the fluid inlet temperature and the convection film coefficient with the passageway. Now we have all the information to approximate fluid flow in an FEA solver. Let's go ahead and look at an application, a heat sink with liquid cooling. As introduced in the previous example, a heat sink is used to dissipate heat from a component, and liquid cooling can make this process more effective. We will investigate the temperature distribution on a heat sink and compare the effectiveness of the heat sink with and without liquid cooling. Also, the heat sink is assumed to be mounted on a part dissipating heat. We'll not model the part directly, but represent it with a heat flux boundary condition applied to the bottom surface of the heat sink. Steady state thermal analysis is used because we're interested in how it behaves in operation. For the fluid flow in the passageway, the mass flow rate is assumed to be 0.05 kg per second, and a fixed temperature is applied to one end, representing the inlet temperature of the liquid entering the pipe. A convection boundary condition is defined between the liquid and the inner surface of the passageway. Instead of using a constant bulk temperature for this convection, the change in the bulk temperature of the downstream fluid will be calculated by the solver. Other than that, we also assume a natural flow convection boundary condition on the fins and the bodies of the heat sink. Note that in this case, for the purpose of simplicity, conduction in the pipe body is not modeled, meaning that the liquid directly interacts with the heat sink. In reality, the liquid is in contact with a copper pipe and the pipe is attached to the heat sink, so the addition of the copper pipe should be considered in an actual application. Running the simulation will give us the following temperature distribution on the heat sink and the fluid. The overall temperature on the heat sink is around 85 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the liquid is gradually increased as it flows through the passageway. We can find the input heat of the system by multiplying the heat flux input and the area of the bottom surface, which turns out to be 110 Watt. If we do a probe on the convection boundary condition between the fluid and the heat sink, we can see that the energy rate the liquid takes away is 54 Watt, so a great amount of the energy is dissipated by the liquid cooling. Now let's do a comparative study and run a simulation without the liquid cooling. This time the heat sink temperature increases to over 144 degrees Celsius, and it again proves the effectiveness of the liquid cooling. 